Hi, everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, where we go to the event from the noise. Uh, SiliconANGLE's been doing theCUBE since uh, early in 2010, and we're at the MongoDB Days conference in New York City. We're at the Marriott Marquis. Of course, the big talk in the last two days, and on, you know, Bernanke says the economy's doing big market drops 500 points. <laughs> but up a little bit today, but it's kind of struggling. People are really watching to see what kind of Friday this is, and you know, everybody's wringing their hands, watching the bond market. Uh, you know, is this a good, good correction or a bad sign of things to come? But uh, it's all good here. Uh, we're talking about, you know, uh, we're talking about innovations in, in database technology are, are really leading uh, the charge with new applications. Um, and as you know, in SiliconANGLE, Wikibon, we've been covering this whole big data theme for quite some time, uh, the, all the trends. I'm here with Jeff Kelly, who's uh, Wikibon's lead big data analyst. Jagesh Saheba is here. He is the chief architect at the ADP Innovation Labs. He's a practitioner, uh, and he's going to share with us some of the hands-on knowledge he has around building apps, modern day apps, using MongoDB. Jagesh, welcome to theCUBE. Good to be here. So tell us a little bit about your role as chief architect uh, and uh, generally and specifically a little bit about ADP Innovation Labs. Uh, so I'm the chief architect for ADV, ADP Innovation Lab. Uh, the lab's mission is very simple. We use technology to create amazing products for our clients. And this product is that most important resource. So ADP is one of the largest HCM service product provider in the world. Mm. Uh, worldwide We're a customer. presence, <laughs> worldwide <laughs> presence, <laughs> uh, and and the innovation lab, uh, we incubate products, technologies, and mobile is one of the technology we introduced uh, a few years, and it has been quite successful. And MongoDB is component of that offering. Mobile is just uh, taking the world by storm. We were at the Vlog, and that's all anybody was talking about. Um, you know, we, there's a big discussion about is the web getting faster, works are getting faster, and mm -hmm. and and the like. Uh, but you've got now added complexity. Yes. The cloud, social data, it's like two steps forward, one step, um, and mobile you know, changes everything. So talk about some of the challenges from an architecture standpoint and how you guys are addressing them. So mobile, mobile did change everything, right? Um, so one of the, one of the things that we, we saw happening with the newer tech, mobile tsunami computing, is that the, the consumers are demanding experience. This access does anywhere, any type of their own device to work, use it. Devices are personal. So from an enterprise application perspective, we wanted to create an architecture and product that addressed a lot of the demand consumer architecture, those uh, demands. So talk about uh, some of this that, that you see, particularly from the consumer standpoint, because you know, from, as a consumer, performance is everything, right? When yeah. I go on my mobile, I, go, ah, I get worse performance. And so, how do you, in this day and age, figure the culprit network, database, is it the storage? You know, is that a <laughs> challenge for you in that? So, uh, you, you're right. The mobile, uh, mobile introduced the fact that they want available anytime, anywhere, uh, even on a low la latency, uh, even with the latency of the network, the cellular network, they want as applications in real time uh, with a uh, nice experience. We, we set out to create a web scale growth that can uh, millions of users. So we looked at all the components uh, of a front end, high performing, extremely scale to millions of users, and we accounted for latency as we bring ADP services through a single application on the mobile platform. Uh, myriads of systems behind the scene, retrieve your data, uh, we build in the cache. So what can we do to improve the provision we were prefetching the equation, you would come use the application and access your data at a certain point in time. So this is where the behavior analytics, mm. using big data analytics, to have that feedback cycle so we can prefetch data from our backend systems, make it available for you, or with the WebSocket technology, we could even push it to your device and have it ready for you by the time you ready to consume that information. He's using analytics and, and machines to make decisions about where to put data so that you can have the user experience be more pleasant. Ab yeah. Absolutely, yeah, we right. capture every impression with the goal of understanding how the product is being utilized, how an end user typically interacts with the product, and, and to do predictive uh, caching, hmm. right? So one of the examples that I use is we know 
that you come every other week because that coincides with your pay cycle and you view your pay statement around 9 a.m. in the morning. So I can go prefetch that data and make it available uh, to the application so the application doesn't incur that latency of calling our payroll engine, but I can prefetch that data, make it available in at the application tier cache, and if you use our native application, I can even push that data to you uh, and make it available, have it ready for you on the device itself. Well, that's a fantastic example of the way uh, big data is impacting um, product development. Uh, we were at the uh, Excel Partners uh, Stanford event a, a couple months back and talked to a lot of startups, uh, companies like Prezi, for instance, who maybe you don't consider a big data company, but they're using data mm -hmm. to feed the uh, development of their applications to understand how people are using it uh, and, and developing new services in their applications to make it, as you say, you know, the best experience possible uh, for the user. Um, but So let's dig into the data itself a little bit. So mm -hmm. obviously we're here at uh, MongoDB days, um, so data these days comes in all shapes and sizes and flavors, structured, multi-structured, unstructured. Um, so I know you're using Mongo as DB as one of the technologies kind of under the covers to support uh, yes. your application development. Um, talk a little bit about the data sources, where you're getting this data from, uh, the structure of the data, and how Mongo and, and perhaps some other technologies are you helping you, um, are making it possible for you to bring in all this data that's not in neat rows and columns. I think the technology such as MongoDB and NoSQL technologies play a big part into uh, how we deal with data. So for ADP, we interact with the numerous backend systems, be your payroll engine, benefits engine, your time and labor management systems. So you can see the variety of data that can that could come out of these systems. And the mobile application has to consume that and present to the present to the end user. So the variety of data is there. If you have a database technology that requires fixed schemas, right, and it requires, uh, it, 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 it handicaps you uh, if you had to, if you continuously have to modify your schema and have the schema migration as you roll out additional functionality. So MongoDB and NoSQL technologies are allowing us to deal data uh, in, a, in a very agnostic way. Essentially, we can take any JSON data type, any JSON document, and put it into cache, and consume it, make it available for application to consume. As the, you, you know, we're creating a web scale application, so the volume of data is, is tremendous. Mm. As we scale our applications to millions of users, we need to deal with the high volume uh, of, uh, of data. So we, we covered the variety of data, the high volume of data, and MongoDB is kind of hits the sweet, sweet spot to manage data complexity that, that we have at ADP. Yeah, help, help, uh, help us put MongoDB into context in the larger world of NoSQL. There's all different flavors of NoSQL, and yes. you know, we hear about HBase and Cassandra and some other things. Where, where is that sweet spot for Mongo? Is it, is it um, somewhere kind of in, in, in the, where, where kind of scale and uh, variety kind of converge? Uh, versus purely a, a, a good scale out database versus purely good for multiple types of data. Where does Mongo kind of fit in that larger NoSQL universe? I think what Mongo does uniquely is, uh, you know, people go to NoSQL solution for scalability, mm -hmm. for performance scalability. Uh, what Mongo is able to do is deliver on those promises of NoSQL as well, but at the same time offer a rich data manipulation functionality that our application requires, right? In order to, you know, we can we have REST interface, JSON, uh, JSON documents, but at times you need to manipulate that data, and Mongo provides the framework to do that manipulation, and I think that creates that sweet spot of I'm not losing all the functionality of a traditional relational data store, mm -hmm. I'm keeping that while I'm getting the scalability and the performance of a NoSQL data mm -hmm. store. So, so translate that, if you could, into kind of making the business case to, let's say, a, a CEO, mm -hmm. uh, or someone who's you know, not in the IT world, who doesn't necessarily understand NoSQL, isn't even interested in what NoSQL is, or right. structured, unstructured. They just want to know, what is the business case for investing in a new technology when, you know, we, uh, I'm a CEO, and you know, we, we use Oracle, we use traditional databases, why, why are we looking at some open source technology and this new technology? How do you, um, how would you articulate that business case to somebody who's not, uh, you know, deep in the weeds into the, into the tech itself? Right, so uh, in terms of a business case for, for a technology like MongoDB and NoSQL, it, it's, very, it's very simple, right? We are creating systems at a web, web, web scale. What typically happens with the traditional data stores is that you scale up. 
as your demand increases, you buy bigger and bigger machines mm. uh, to meet the demand. And in, in, so there are two curves. One curve is the cost curve, which exponentially goes up as you buy bigger and bigger uh, boxes to meet the demand. And then there's another curve, which is the performance. There comes a time where the sheer size of the, uh, of the infrastructure, your performance degrades, right? You want to flatten out those two curves. So one of the biggest selling point of a technology uh, such as MongoDB is that you kind of flatten out both curves. So you want to get consistent performance as you scale out. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you don't want your cost curve to exponentially go high. You want to flatten it out and make it, uh, make it much more manageable uh, from a cost perspective. So we run MongoDB on a vanilla hardware, vanilla VM infrastructure hardware, and we are able to scale this fairly easily. I think that's a, that's a, a an amazing business case to tell your CEO mm -hmm. that you know we're building a web scale application that can scale to millions of users, yet the infrastructure costs are not going to go exponentially higher as we scale more and uh, as we get bigger and bigger. Yeah, that that certainly would resonate with the CEO. Well, so I want to push on that a little bit and get an architect's perspective because there's there's increasingly I mean we watch the hyperscale guys right and. We've, said, we've been saying now for years, if you want to know what's going to happen in the enterprise, look at what's happening in Google and Amazon and Facebook, and it's going to seep, seep into the enterprise, and it's clearly happening. However, there's some discussion around within the hyperscale community now of the massive amounts of capital investment that they're putting in there. Wall Street's putting pressure on guys like Facebook and Google for all the CapEx that they're spending. And they're starting to, I think, struggle with some of the complexity of scale out. I mean, let's face it, you know, scale up, shared, you know, shared something, is you know conceptually anyway easier to, to manage at least in theory. Um, at some point, does that complexity of scale out get so great that that cost curve reverses, or do you believe that the industry will continue to allow that you know flatten cost curve and that balance that you described to be achieved? I think that's the beauty of uh, where where a company like Tengen can come in and and address the enterprise needs, right? So to enterprise like ours, yes, we will scale out. Mm. The infrastructure will get larger. There will be more number of virtual machines or machines uh, participating in the in the in the delivery. Uh, so enterprise capability of uh, what they're introducing and a lot of the features are inherent to this architecture. Being able to, you know, have less uh, hands-on requ uh, operations requirements, but being able to manage cluster automatically, being able to manage shard automatically, being able to balance automatically. If you add additional node, being able to adjust to that increased capacity. If you take out a node or a component fails, these are all inherently built into the into the architecture. So, and, and I see company uh, Tengen addressing some of the enterprise need around security management aspects, right, with the on-premise management capabilities which is uh, introduced in the latest release. They're addressing some of these concerns. But I think in, in terms of choices that, that we have, scaling up versus scaling out, I think the value proposition is very clear. In, in terms of scaling out with a commodity hardware. So that's over, I mean, in your mind, right? That debate is over. In my mind, yeah. it is manageable, yeah. and I think, I think there are some, uh, there are, you know, security is one of, the, one of the areas of concern, and I see the focus on, on, on those aspects to, to address those. So we talked about mobile complexity. Cl cloud, obviously, in the one hand, simplifies things, uh, mm -hmm. because you get this, this awesome resources that you can utilize, but, for a company like yours, where you're probably looking at you know combinations of cloud, not just pure public, you're not a, 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 you don't have a blank sheet of paper to start from, so you're probably doing some kind of hybrids. That adds to the complexity, doesn't it? With this, particularly with the, the security uh, co component. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think the complexity is uh, the the tool set or the technology has built-in capability to manage complexity. Is it all solved? Probably not, right? I think the complexity for a company like our comes in is when you introduce new technology into a stack, right? And, and the acceptance of it, and the putting operational procedures around it, those are the complexity, but I don't think they're necessarily technology complexity, much more like procedural complexity. People in process. People in process, yeah, okay. right? And, and, and we're getting to that stage where within ADP, we see MongoDB as a service, as a platform being offered to application to make that adoption easier uh, to, 
you know, to various applications rather than they investing their time and effort building the infrastructure itself. How does uh, DevOps play into your shop? Um, in fact, we still do DevOps uh, uh, with MongoDB today. Uh, we don't have a dedicated DBA, nor, nor we have a dedicated mm -hmm. operations person. Uh, so we, we believe in DevOps. Uh, the developers are able to uh, manage and, and operate Mongo in production environment. Uh, we have automated a lot of numerous things through scripts. We have automated a lot of things. So it, it is not something that, that consumes a whole lot of, of their time. So I think, I think the DevOps gives us that opportunity to be in touch with the, your production system rather than throwing over the wall and somebody else manages your production system. Uh, so I wonder if we could uh, just talk a little bit about the impact of uh, Mongo uh, on your plans for the future in terms of uh, the other types of technologies you're, you're working with. I mean, do you find or do you find that uh, is Mongo going to uh, be kind of the database of choice for building applications going forward? And is that impacting your investment in other? I'm sure you've got you probably got Oracle databases running somewhere. Is that going to impact? Uh, do you see this becoming the NoSQL world, Mongo specifically, but NoSQL in general becoming more and more critical to your infrastructure and potentially pushing out some of those relational, traditional relational technologies uh, that are in in your environment currently? Uh, pushing out is probably a, a, a harsher term. <laughs> uh, rather, uh, I think there is a need and there is a place to use technology such as this. And uh, there, there is a need and a place to use a relational technology. If I'm writing a payroll engine from scratch, right, mm -hmm. uh, I would probably use a, a, a traditional da database technologies. Uh, but if, you, if you're creating a massively scalable presentation engine like mobile or even a portal system, right, this technology makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, so I see coexistence, mm -hmm. uh, and and the time will tell in terms mm -hmm. of the feature sets and what comes uh, what comes within this uh, within this database uh, technologies. But I today I see co happy coexistence between the traditional re relational database technology and NoSQL technologies like MongoDB. Jigesh, uh, we're running out of time, but the last word uh, we'll give to you. What advice would you give fellow practitioners, uh, you know, trying to move down this journey of, of of new technology, NoSQL, open source? You talked about people and processes. Maybe that's part of the advice. But what advice would you give your peers? I think the I think the key advice is that listen to your users. Everything we do at ADP Innovation Lab is user-centric, right? Listen to your user, understand what they're doing, understand where they're going, what devices they're using, how they want to consume your services, and tailor your architecture to, for that need. And naturally, when you, have, uh, when you have a client base of ADP, over 600,000 client base, millions of users, you need to pick tool sets and technologies that can scale to that level, right? But it has to be driven by the need. And I think uh, I think that's the that's the key advice that I would get. Listen to your user, build the architecture to deliver the ultimate performance, the ultimate simpli simplicity, and empower your user, inspire confidence in them, and and your application will succeed. Jigesh, uh, thanks very much. Great advice. Love what you guys are doing. Love the 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 attention to the users. The the mobile innovations. Congratulations, and uh, thanks very much for coming on the cube. Thank you very much. Thank All right, you. keep it keep it right there, everybody. We'll, we're coming back next with Rackspace. Uh, big announcement today, uh, and uh, this is the Cube Silicon Angle's continuous production of MongoDB days. We're here live in New York City. We'll be right back. <laughs>